My mother? No! What have you done to her? I'll kill you! Ah! This is the sordid story of murdering the entire Draconis bloodline and exploring the morbid and easy-to-miss easter egg that only occurs after each family member has been killed. After dealing with the pupating lich Saladane, we're directed to the great oak tree in Coral for our reward and next contract. Searching the base of the tree that's obscured by shrubs, we find an inconspicuous sack which contains our reward of 500 septums, as well as our next dead drop orders from Lucian Lachance, which we read as we exit the city towards our first target near Bruma. The necromancer Saladain is dead, and you are not. That is quite the accomplishment. But your work as a silencer has just begun. Your next assignment requires you to eliminate not just one target, but five. An entire family, in fact. The unlucky siblings are Perenia Draconis, Matthias Draconis, Andreas Draconis, Sibylla Draconis, and Zalia Draconis. The location of most of the family members are unknown, so you should begin your search with the family matron, Perenia, who resides at the firm called Apple Watch. You must discern the locations of all the Draconis family members and then systematically eliminate them. I suggest you first speak with the mother and find out if she has any valuable information on the whereabouts of her children before ending her life. When every member of the Draconis family lies dead, journey to the city of Skingrad. In the castle courtyard, you will find a well containing your reward for the Draconis contract, as well as any further assignment I might have. Not far west of Bruma, in the undulating foothills, we find ourselves at the quaint homestead of Apple Watch. Entering the farmhouse's interior, we see the sleeping Perenia Draconis to our right, and are also met with a meandering guard dog, Jake, perhaps too old or just disinclined to deal with our intrusion. As the house is full of clutter, foodstuffs, and not much else of value, we decided best to exclusively focus on our task at hand and attempt to extract information from the slumbering Imperial about her family. When roused, she rightly awakens with a start. Oh, hello there. I'm sorry, you startled me. My nerves get rattled rather easily these days, I'm afraid. Living alone will do that to you. Now, is there something I can help you with? We're then given three unique options to reply. The first, as always, is to say nothing. Oh, well, all right then. I guess I'll be going about my business. Goodbye. Unhappy with that abrupt end to our conversation... We can then choose to say a more honest, albeit incendiary, you and your children must die. What? Excuse me? Did... did you say die? My... my children? No! Oh no! Don't hurt my precious babies, I won't let you! Perenia will then rush for a nearby axe on the shelf. However, she's easily disarmed, and her poor pup is slain in the excitement. This to her credit, here. even disarmed, elderly imp will oh. grasp for a nearby dagger <sighs> on her dining table to press her assault, only to lose it too in the ensuing brawl. <laughs> Left sprawled out and mauled accordingly. <laughs> Although enraging in Perenia means we accrue no bounty, tact also has its merits. And we can instead explore a more sneaky option, instead of bludgeoning the lady to death, saying, Perenia, is it? I'm looking for your children. My children? Whatever for? Oh, oh dear. Excuse an old woman's stupidity. You're here to pick up my gift list. Using your gift service was the smartest thing I've ever done. My children are spread across Cyrodiil, and it's so hard to shop for them all. So here's the list of all my precious little ones, though I dare say they're not so little anymore. <laughs> they grow up so fast, I swear. You'll notice that the list gives each child's location and some suggestions for gifts. Oh, and here's the gold I'm supposed to give you. Now please go. 
Those children are so dear to me, and I'd really like you to get them something special. Thanks again. Perenia will then mistakenly hand us her supposed courier a list of her children's locations, and before we seek them out individually, we must contend with the Draconis Matriarch as per our orders. It should be noted there are multiple ways to dispose of Perenia, and one of her deaths involves a small and very dark easter egg. For example, as a proud agent of Sithis sending souls to the void, killing Perenia gives us no pause. Help! Help! However, killing the Imperial outside means we don't have to snuff out her innocent dog, Jake. We may be a murderer, but not a monster. Speaking of outdoors, as from 6am to 2pm, Perenia can be found working outside. Quite cheerily, too. According to the wiki, it is possible for the Imperial to perish at the hands of roaming Daedra pre-quest. The reason being is, she is not set as essential, and there is a small chance that an Oblivion Gate will spawn nearby, in which case we must locate her body and pluck the list of her soon-to-be-dead children of her corpse. However, the cruelest of Easter eggs can only be obtained if we wait until Draconis Senior rests after a long day at the back of a hoe. It's then we can find her inside her house, reading while enjoying her favourite chair by the fire. Greeting her once more, she questions. Oh, back again? I don't know what else you could need. I gave you the list. That should tell you where you can find my children and what they want. Now please, make sure my gifts get to the children. I'm counting on you. If we then kill Perenia with a sneak attack while her dog Jake isn't aware... <gasps> Her faithful companion, upon discovering its master's corpse, is scripted to stand over her body and howl. As we exit the deceased Draconis residence, we check over her letter to aid in our hunting down her mongrel litter, which reads, Dear Courier, I would like to thank you again for agreeing to assist me. I was so delighted when a friend recommended you and will certainly employ your services again in the future if everything goes well this round of purchases. You can imagine how difficult it is for an old woman such as myself to get around. My children, darlings as they are, deserve the best, and I'm afraid I haven't been able to properly show my love and appreciation for them in quite a few years, but all that is behind me now. Here is the list of gifts I think my family would most enjoy, as well as each child's current place of residence which should be used for delivery. Breaking down the video into four sections representing her children as to better illustrate different ways to eliminate each. We start with her first son she mentions in her note, Matthias. Proenia writes of her son, Matthias, Talos Plaza District, Imperial City. He has a home there. Matthias always was a rough and tumble lad. The last I'd heard, he'd fallen in with some pretty tough characters there in the Imperial City. I'd feel so much better if I knew he was well protected, so I'd like for you to find him a nice chorus. Nothing too light, iron or steel should be fine. And if possible, I'd like it engraved with, To my dear Matty, I'll always be here to protect you. Love, Mum. Tracking down Matthias, we learn he is one of four bodyguards under the employ of the renowned High Elf Mage and Collector of Antiquities, Umbacano. If we speak to Matthias in Umbacano's manner pre-quest, his dialogue will centre around his occupation, and upon seeing us, he may simply utter a loud snort of derision. <laughs> Go ahead, please. If we ask him about the Imperial City, he will reflect upon his opinion on Umbacano. Master Umbacano is a fine gentleman. Mad for old alien stuff, true, but he's got the dosh, so it's all right, ain't it? When asked about Umbacano, he will elaborate. I got no complaints. Kind of an arrogant bastard, if you get right down to it. But he pays us well enough. Upon leaving the conversation, he will rather rudely say... Uh-huh. Whatever you say. It should be noted, curiously, Matthias is a Breton, though the rest of his family are Imperials. Originally, Matthias would have greeted us with, Matthias Draconis, I make my living as a guard at Umbicano Manor. 
However, this line was voiced by Wes Johnson, who originally voiced both Imperials and Bretons. When the quest next of kin has started, Matty will greet us with unique dialogue of... Yeah? What are you looking at? After which we have three different options to end the conversation. As always, the first reply is to simply say nothing. Okay, well then, I'm going to go about my business. And stop staring at me, would you? You're giving me the creeps. The latter two yeah? options are both threats that cause his disposition to drop by 50 points, such as... I'm looking at a dead man. What? A dead man? You got some kind of death wish, is that it? With a second disposition drop, he will outright attack when we purr. Time to die, slave of Sithis. Slave of what? Oh, all right then. You're some kind of crazy, is that it? Come here then. Show me what you've got. Yeah! I've fought mud crabs more fearsome than you. <laughs> However, instead of a messy brawl in a very public space, we have a few options to fell the brusque Breton. For example, one, snipe from afar. After a hard day at work, Matthias is known to frequent the bloated float inn in the evening. He leaves the inn at 9pm, which presents us with a welcome opportunity to snipe him from afar, and if no one sees us shoot him, we will not receive a bounty. Option 2. Basement Dweller During the day, Matthias works as a guard in the basement of the Umbacano Manor, and it is possible to sneak in there and kill him with one blow, avoiding a bounty. If he catches us in the basement, and we stand there for a few moments, instead of calling the guards, he will attack. You're not supposed to be in here. I'm warning you. Get out, or I'll call the guards. Die, <gasps> damn you! If this happens, we can again defend ourselves and this time we'll incur no bounty when he dies. 3. Frenzy Attempting to catch Matthias unawares is a much more difficult task than first expect, as breaking into his two-story abode after work in the Talos Plaza district we find he does indeed sleep upstairs next to his live-in partner, Calantinus, an imperial commoner. Unfortunately for Calantinus, Matty appears to be a never-nude. Despite all of the clothes strewn about in a nearby dresser, Matt refuses to shed his chainmail cuirass even when sleeping. Or perhaps they're just good friends with an awkward sleeping arrangement. Congruently, this makes our method of execution much more satisfying as we cast the spell of frenzy and watch the two have a domestic row which seems to be loud enough that the guards are forced to intervene, leaving poor Calantinus to pick up the pieces. Why? I fought mud crabs more fearsome than you. Ah, ah. Ah. Oh. Am I supposed to be ah. impressed? Ah. Ah. Oh. Oh, am I supposed to be impressed? May you rest in peace. It should be noted in impressive oblivion fashion. After Matthias has been killed, we may hear citizens of the Imperial City outside the Talos Plaza district say, Hey, did you hear about that murder in the Talos Plaza district? I think the man's name was Draconis. Yeah, cut down in the prime of his life. Perenia then writes of her second son, Andreas. Andreas, the drunken dragon inn. He owns the place and lives there as well. Andy has been brewing his own beer and spirit since he was six years old. The opening of that inn was the happiest day of his life. I'd like for you to get him some new tavern glasses. I'm sure there are craftsmen in the Imperial City who could make a fancy set from frosted ebony or old Mary crystal. 
Making our way down the yellow road to the northeast of Leowin, we indeed find the quaint inn with a cheerily bloated drunken dragon decal on the sign out front. Despite the care taken with the graphic and Andreas's dream to run an inn, when we enter the drinking establishment, we find the inn is all but deserted, save a lone Imperial soldier and Andreas dutifully standing behind the bar. Andreas offers his services all day long except when he sleeps on the bedroll behind him, which leaves the Imperial open for our first method of execution, a sneak attack. However, this is a very risky time to attempt to execute the publican, as unless the guard has their back turned, we could risk receiving a bounty. It's all over, lawbreaker. Your spree is at an end. I'll take any stolen goods you have. The next move is yours. Pay your fine, or I'll haul you away. Instead, our best bet, it seems, is to speak to the publican and learn more about him before assessing our next move. Approaching the innkeeper, we find Andreas's disposition will affect his first impression where with a higher disposition, he'll look at us and say, Hey there, pal. Need a room? Or a low disposition. Oh, by the nine divines. Why do I get all the riffraff? Looking for a room? He might sound service-minded, but if his disposition towards us is below 50, he will close the conversation with an insult. Next time, go someplace else, huh? The Inn of Ill Omen, the Tiber Septum Hotel, anywhere but here, okay? A foreboding reference to our first official contract, executing the sleazy shut-in Rufio in the Inn of Ill Omen. <laughs> when we greet him during Next of Kin, our dialogue options will then change, and as usual, we can say nothing. Hmm, all right then. You're not one for talking. I can respect that. Well, if you need anything, just let me know. However, as we need the gruff Andreas to start a fight, we can declare, I'm here to kill you. Kill me? What is this? Who are you? I don't know who sent you, but you won't take me down without a fight. So go ahead. Make your move. The most outright evil provocation to goad the innkeeper into a fight without incurring a bounty, we can lean in and whisper, Andreas, we've got something to tell you. Your mother bled like a pig. My mother? No! What have you done to her? I'll kill you! Ah! An enraged Andreas will then attack us, yeah! and we can kill him without fear of bounty. Plus, possible aid of the resident Imperial Guard, as he seems to have gone mad of his own volition. If he's standing on the opposite side of the table, poor Andreas's blows won't even reach us. With the Draconis boys dead, we then read about Perennia's two girls, the first being Sibylla Draconis. And as we enter Muck Valley Cavern between the Imperial City and Chaden Hall, which contains a multitude of wildlife that her mother mentions in the letter in which Perennia wrote, Sibylla, Muck Valley Cavern. Yes, my daughter lives in a cave. And no, I'm not very happy about it. Sibby always loved animals almost as much as Andy loves beer. And a couple of years ago, she apparently thought it was a good idea to abandon the Empire and live as a savage with the rest of the animals. In that time, I'm afraid, Sibby has kind of cracked. She's basically as wild as the beasts she lives with. What can I do? I'm Sibby's mother and will always love her. She obviously doesn't want or need anything from civilized society. So what I'd like you to do is find a tanner and secure the largest fur blankets you can possibly find. The last time I saw Sibby, she was nearly naked. And I can't imagine there's much in that cave to keep her warm. When you do bring them to Mark Valley Cavern, be careful. The wild animals are bad enough, but Sibby herself will probably attack anyone on sight. 
Post evading Sibylla's pets, we bump into the scantily clad Imperial Barbarian loitering by her campfire. Attempting to speak to Sibylla, who has a very high aggression and is likely to attack on sight, we find her mother was indeed correct as she bears down on us with her steel mace. Well, well, look who we've got here. You're pathetic. However, it should be noted, if her disposition towards us is high enough, she does have, unfortunately, no conversation beyond the normal rumours. A pleasure to speak with you. Nobody goes into the mountains but hunters and thieves on the lamb. Food and shelter is hard to come by. Good day. If she does not attack us on sight, she subsequently can be triggered to attack if we draw our weapon. Finding the battle to be overwhelming with the savage, we opt to about face and flee the cave with the barbarian and her wild companions in tow. Luckily for us, we learn that Sibla will follow, but the animals will not be able to exit the cave. Outside, our trusty steed Shadowmere comes to our defence and proves that nature can be quite cruel, as she's more than capable of killing a flailing Sibla on her own. What's the matter, getting tired? Yeah! Uh. Uh. Perenia then writes of her final surviving offspring, Kalia, Castle Leowind. You'll find her in the castle barracks. Kalia, my beautiful Kay, my dearest daughter broke so many hearts when she was younger, but now that she's an officer in the Imperial Legion, I'm afraid she's let herself go a bit. Not gotten fat, by my father, not that. But she's settled into a more practical kind of look. Even a bit boyish, I guess you could say. So what I'd like you to do is get my Kay as much pretty girl stuff as you can. Flowers, perfume, Nord chocolate, that sort of thing. Hunting down Kay in the barracks as directed pre-quest, when greeting us, she will joke, saying, I'm Kalia Draconis, captain of the Leowin Guard. I hope we will not meet in my official capacity. <laughs> if we ask her about Leowin, she will tell us. I came to Leowin after a tour in the legions. Poor mother. She hoped I'd choose the chapel or civil service or perhaps even marry well. Upon leaving the conversation, she will warn. Move along, citizen. I won't abide loitering. Poor mother indeed. Once the quest next of kin has started, Kaylee's greeting will change too. Yes? Is there something you need? After which we get three different options which will end the conversation. If we, as always, choose to say nothing, she'll impatiently say. Hello? Did you hear me? I asked if you needed anything. Well then, I've got duties to tend to, so if you'll excuse me. We can also tell her, you know, you look just like your mother. My mother? Oh, do you know her? She's such a sweet woman. I've been a terrible daughter, I'm afraid. I simply must visit more often. Anyway, I have duties to tend to. If you see my mother, tell her I'll visit soon, I promise. We can also be blunt. However, this will make her attack and net us a thousand gold bounty when we admit, I'm afraid I need you. Dead. <laughs> oh, do you now? Well then, far be it for me to deny you such a reasonable request. Guards, I need assistance. This person is resisting arrest. Die, damn you. <laughs> Die. Oh! We find the only way to kill the captain without incurring any substantial bounty, regardless if the guards catch us or not, is for us to play on the prejudices of the local law enforcement. As the wiki states, Kalia is the only female of the guard class in the game. So, what better way to feed into prejudices than waiting until she slumbers in the barracks 
and casting a frenzy spell on her. Effectively, the poor woman seems to have gone quite mad in the eyes of the other guards due to the demands of her post, and a fellow patrolman are forced to put her down. Look out! Show me ah, what you've got! Go. Do your worst! Watch out! Unfortunately, now they will think twice in Leowen before contemplating taking on a female officer in the future. Despite the circumstances of her death after the kill, the Leowen townsfolk stay fond of their captain and can be heard saying, Oh, how horrible. You know Kalia Draconis, that nice watch officer stationed at the castle? She's been murdered. With all the Draconis whelps slain, this brings us to the promised Draconis Easter egg a lot of people miss. At the end of Perenia's letter, she explains she will reimburse us with the second half of our reward once the quote-unquote gifts have been dispensed to her spawn, and the letter concludes... You've already received half of your fee in advance, and you will receive the remainder after the gifts have been purchased and delivered as we originally agreed. Thank you again for providing such a valuable service. Sincerely, Perenia Draconis. It's only after the quest is concluded we receive an unforeseen gift, although not in the form of septums as promised, as when visiting Apple Watch later, we spy five graves near the homestead dug by an unknown mourner. If we read each grave, they say, here lies Sibylla Draconis. She died as she lived, like a beast. Here lies Kalia Draconis, dedicated daughter and noble member of the Leowen City Watch, killed in action. Here lies Matthias Draconis. His mother always told him he'd end up dead if he didn't clean up his life. Here lies Andreas Draconis, dutiful son and master Bruman. May he forever serve Azura in the afterlife. And finally, here lies Perenia Draconis, kind and gentle matron of the Draconis family. May her spirit forever curse the murderer who stole her precious life. Indeed, true to the tombstone's word, the scornful spirit of Perenia will rise up in a futile attempt to claim vengeance against the Dreadfather's agent, us, as we gleefully crush her bloodline into dust. Ah!